Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. We're on Unit Five. We're talking about cycles, not your bicycle, but something that repeats, like a circle, like the wheels on your bicycle. They go around and around, and they begin again and again. So that's what we're talking about with cycles. In lesson thirteen, we're talking about the world's greatest traveler. Now you're probably thinking the world's greatest traveler is it Marco Polo? No, it's not a person. It's a thing. We're going to focus on the cycle of water, and we're going to see how water is the world's greatest traveler because water really travels a lot, and it travels. In a cycle, it goes around and around. Well, we'll explore that idea later on in the reading passage. But of course, as usual, we need to learn some vocabulary first to better understand the reading passage. So let's get started with the vocabulary. The first word is、uh, defined as a series of events that is repeated a number of times. Now you've probably seen these types of pictures before. We can see a tree in different stages, and we know, right, that this is spring, this is summer, this is fall, and this is winter. And we might think, well, seasons. But we're saying a series of events. That is repeated a number of times. It's not just the seasons. The seasons is an example of this. But what are we talking about? We're talking about a cycle. It's like I talked about before, right? On your bicycle, right? You have two wheels. Well, think about one wheel. It starts here and it goes around and it comes back to the beginning, right? It's a cycle. It's a series of events that is repeated. So it goes around, right? It starts here, maybe in spring, goes around to summer, then to fall, then to winter, and it comes back. To spring, so the seasons is a type of cycle, and there are many types of cycles in the world around us. We'll talk about one in the reading passage. Okay, word number two: water that falls from the sky. So you're probably thinking about rain, right? You know this word, rain. That's an easy word, but there's another word that we use for rain that's longer. It's more of a scientific word, and I'm sorry, it's kind of long, right? Precipitation. Precipitation. Wow, so many syllables. There's five syllables. So let's say it fast. Well, slow first, and then fast. Precipitation, precipitation. One more time, precipitation. Okay. So if you say it quickly, it sounds like precipitation. Okay. Precipitation just means rain. It's more of a scientific word for rain. Okay. Let's move on to number three. The process of water collecting together in the air. So the process of water. Collecting together in the air. Now you're probably thinking, "What is this? It's a cloud." But we're not talking about a cloud. We're not talking about、uh, the grouping of moisture in the air. We're talking about the process of. And there's a special word for that. We call that condensation. Oh, big words in this lesson, right? So let's do this slowly. Condensation. Condensation. Faster, condensation, condensation. Okay, so condensation is a process. It's the process of water collecting together in the air, and clouds are formed because of condensation. So if you think, how do clouds appear in the sky? It's because of condensation. So condensation is the process. Okay, let's move on. For a liquid to be taken into the air, this is a sad picture, right? This little boy, he wants to go swimming, but there's no water in the swimming pool. What happened to the water in the swimming pool? Well, it evaporated, 
right? Evaporate is a verb. It's also a process, right? It's the process of a liquid to be taken into the air on a hot day. If you have a, a dish of water, or there's a puddle of water on the ground, well, after some time in the hot day, that water will disappear, right? In the summertime, you look at the streets; they're very dry. A truck comes by and sprays water on the streets, but after a little while, the water is gone. The street is very dry again because of evaporation. Okay, so evaporation makes the water go into the air, and then when the air is cool, the air, the water gets together, and condensation happens. Okay, so first evaporation, then condensation. We'll talk about those later, but we need to know about those words. Okay, next one. Five to suck up or drink in. To suck up or drink in. Is to absorb, absorb. Okay, we're doing some a little bit difficult less、uh, words in this lesson, right? Now, of course, if you spill something, you can use a paper towel to absorb the liquid that you spilled on the table. Okay, so you can use a paper towel, and paper towels. The companies that make paper towels will boast. They will brag. They'll say, "Our paper towels have great absorption power." Right? They will absorb a lot of liquid to take in, or to to suck up, or to drink in, or to take in. Okay. Oh, he's happy. To become aware, to become aware of something, is to realize. It looks like he had. Oh, I have an idea, right? It's like, bing, a light bulb goes on over his head. He realizes something. He became aware of something. A lot of famous inventors or scientists, you know, there's stories about them. You know.、Uh, Uh, coming to a moment of realization, right? Like the famous uh, Greek uh, uh, philosopher who sat in a bathtub and said, "Oh, Eureka!" Right, and realized he could use、uh, the water, the weight of an object in a water, to realize how、uh, much volume it had. Okay, so to realize, it's like the moment you understand something. Next one. For a liquid to move together in a single direction, for a liquid, any liquid to move together, and a lot of liquid moving together in a, in, a, in one direction,、it、doesn't have to be a lot. It could be a cup of water, but if you spill it, it moves in a direction. This stream, of course, is moving in a direction downhill. What is it doing? It is flowing. Flow is a verb. To flow, so this small stream is flowing quickly, right? Because maybe it's a, it's kind of a, 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 not very steep, but it's it's a, it's not flat. It's、uh, you know there's uphill and then downhill, and the water will flow quickly downhill. So this is a very active stream, right? Okay. Next one, greatly needed or necessary. Greatly needed or necessary is essential. If something is essential, you really need it. You, it, it for example, we think of、uh, when we think of essential, it's like things that we need to continue to survive, like food. Food is essential. Air, oxygen, is essential. If we don't have it. We'll die, right? So we greatly need it. It's very necessary. It's essential. Okay. Next one, nine. Whoa! Looks like、uh, he's on vacation at a resort. A large cloth used for drying. So what do we call this cloth? You probably take it to the beach with you, or you take it when you go swimming. You use it when you take a shower or a bath. It's called a towel. A towel. So, if you're in a, uh, an English-speaking country and you want a cloth to dry yourself off, you can ask, "Is there a towel, please?" or "Can I get a towel?" Okay, next one. A flow of water used to clean oneself. I just mentioned this word. After you do this, you need a towel. Remember what I said? I said when you take a shower. When we use the word shower, we use it in a larger expression. Very commonly, take a, take a shower. We also use take a bath. 
Okay. Now, what's the difference between a shower and a bath? Well, you see this boy here. The water is falling from the faucet above. It's falling on him like rain. That's a shower. But a bath is where you have a bathtub and you sit in the water, right? And the water's already there, and you you clean yourself with the bath water. It's kind of like when you go to a sauna, right? It's kind of like a big bath, right? And you get in the sauna. But a shower is like this style. So, but we use take a take a shower, take a bath. Okay, you should take a shower every day. <laughs> you should take a shower after you exercise. Remember to do that, right? If you don't take a shower, ooh, some nimze is so, right? Okay, next one. Eleven, a collection of water high up in the sky. We talked about this before, right? I gave you the word before. It's a cloud, right? So this airplane is flying over these clouds. It's very beautiful. If you're ever in an airplane very high up in the sky, look out the window and you can see the the clouds below you. It looks like land, but it's very fantastic, right? Very beautiful, very white, and it looks very clean. Okay, next one. Not moving. So this lake, the water in this lake, is what? It is very still. Still, we can also say. Calm, still or calm. Calm means there's no motion, right? This is very peaceful. Calm. The water is still, no movement. Okay, it's a very beautiful picture. Next one, a very tiny bit of water. So a very tiny bit of water. We what do we call that? We call it a droplet. A droplet. It's like a little ball of water, right? When we When we just drop a little bit of water on something, or when it rains just lightly, not a lot, but the water will collect in little drops, in drops, and we call them droplets. There's one droplet, two droplets. You could also, of course, just say a drop of water, but sometimes people will say droplet. Okay, next one. A small pool of water is a puddle. So you like to go splashing through the puddles, right? Okay. This girl, of course, she's wearing good shoes for that. Don't do that if you're wearing shoes and socks. Your mother will be angry, right? But if you're wearing sandals or or rubber shoes like she's wearing, no problem. Have fun, right? Go running through the puddles of water. Kids like to do that. Okay. Next one. Icy rain. It's rain, but it's really cold. So. It becomes icy. It's almost freezing. We call that sleet. So sleet is, you know, it's not snow. It's not rain. But it's like almost a combination of both. It's where it's really cold and it's raining, and it's it's almost. Icy, right? So it's icy rain. It's sleet. Now sleet is dangerous because on the roads we have to be very careful because, as you know, ice is、uh, mikroa, right? It's slippery, right? So you have to be careful when it's sleet outside. You also have to be careful when you're walking. Okay, next one. For a liquid to absorb into something, when a liquid absorbs, we heard this word before, right? We talked about the paper towel, right? The paper towel will clean up the liquid; it will absorb into the paper towel. We say it soaked, right? If you are soaked, right? It's raining really hard, like in the summertime. You go outside and you don't have an umbrella, you don't have a raincoat, you're just wearing normal clothes. What happens? You get water everywhere in your hair, on your shirt, under your shirt, on your underwear is completely wet. Your socks in your shoes. When you're walking, right, it makes a noise. You are soaked, right? So people will say, "I am soaked." It means I got water everywhere, right? I have to take everything off, take a hot shower, and then dry off. Because I'm soaked. Okay, so to soak is for liquid to completely absorb into something. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be you, your skin, right? It could be a paper towel. It could be a dog. You know, whatever. The water has completely gotten in and and onto something. That's to soak. Okay, next one. 
well, not next one. We, we need to look at the words. Let's check the words that we just learned. Make sure that we remember those and how they are used. So let's go over the different problems here. Number one, I just beep that I forgot to do my homework. So you just, what? It's like you have an idea. And what is that? I just A, made, B, realized, C, spent, D, absorbed. So in this case, right, we could use a word that means that you had a sudden idea. You suddenly became aware of the fact that you forgot to do your homework. Has that ever happened to you? It's not a good feeling. Oh my gosh, right? It's at the beginning of the lesson, the beginning of the class, and you're suddenly realize, oh my gosh, there was homework yesterday. The teacher gave us homework and I forgot. Suddenly you have that idea. That means you realized. I just realized. Oh, I just thought. I just remembered. I just realized that I forgot to do my homework. Not made, not spent, not absorbed. Those don't make sense. Realized. You suddenly became aware of that fact. Okay. Number four. Birth and death are part of the beep of life. Think about that. Birth is at the beginning, right? A person lives their life, right? And then they die. Now, of course, for an individual person, for one person, it's not a continual process. But if that person is born, they grow up, they have a baby, right? That person is born and they grow up. So it's like it goes around in a circle, right? So what do we call that? Birth and death are part of the what of life. End, beginning, C, cycle, D, loss. Remember, you have a beginning and then an end and then it starts again, right? Well, life continues, right? Not for the individual person, unfortunately, right? Uh, it's like a straight line, birth and then death. But if we're talking about all things like human beings, right? People are born, they die. More people are born, they die. It goes around in a continual process. So we call that what? We call it a cycle. That's what I talked about before, right? Birth and death are part of the cycle of life, okay? If you watch The Lion King, maybe an older movie, maybe you haven't seen it, but at the beginning, they talk about the circle of life. That's the same idea. It's the cycle of life. They're talking about constant death and constant renewal, constant death and constant birth. It goes in a cycle, the circle of life. There's a song. Uh, associated with that. Okay, but it's not the end of life because birth continues. It's not the beginning because that's only one part, and it's not the loss of life. It's the cycle. It goes again and again. Okay, next one. Number five. When there is enough water in the sky, it will beep to form clouds. Now remember before I talked about this, how are clouds formed? What is the process for forming clouds. Why are clouds formed? Because it precipitates? Because it rains? No. Because it flows, right? It will flow to form uh, clouds. Water will flow in the sky. That's weird. That doesn't make sense. It will realize. Water can't think, right? It will condense. Ah, condense to form clouds. Condensation is the reason that clouds are formed. If there's enough water in the sky, that water will gather together and form clouds. And we call that, uh, the process, we call it to condense, right? And we call it condensation, okay. Seven, here this tissue will beep the blood. So if you're bleeding, oh no, you have to absorb the blood, right? I just gave you the answer, right? This tissue will absorb the blood. You need to uh, um, not drink it in, but you need to soak it in. You need to stop that blood. So you use a tissue or maybe a bandage to stop the blood. It will absorb the blood and then stop the bleeding. Absorb, not flow, not cut, not pinch, but to absorb the blood. Okay, well that wraps up the vocabulary section of our lesson today. Let's take a short break, come back, and we'll do the reading together, so don't go away.